Hi everyone, this is Randy, uh, Randy at Rako Rents. Recently we hosted a webinar here at Rako Rents. It was titled Assessing Unknown Odors and Chemicals. Uh, Jim Cornish of GasMet Technologies was kind enough to come in and speak with us about his uh, analyzer. And since the webinar we've been asked numerous times about how unknowns are signaled and what should one do next if you, if you find one, something in the residual indicator noting that an unsuccessful analysis has been done. So I'm guessing that you're all busy. We took out this small little subset of the webinar. I hope you find value in it. You have this residual value that's telling you that you have a, a successful analysis. Okay. So what is, what is meant by that? Well, what if you didn't have one of those components in the application library? Would you have missed it? What would, what would happen? So here's the signal of an unknown. So what I'm about to do is take one of these gases out, and it doesn't matter which one it is, but let me say that I'm gonna take the um, ethanol out. Then what has happened is there's been a reanalysis, same sample, of course, we have still got the complete sample, but now the application library is devoid of one of the main components, which is the ethanol. And so it is told the user through this residual column that you have an unsuccessful analysis, which is the trigger to say you have an unknown. There is something in the, the sample uh, that is not in your application. So this is where the strength of the technology can be put into place to solve the air quality, assessing what unknowns and the, and the chemicals that you're dealing with. So the next step for the user is simply to change to a library search function. So what we've done here, we're still dealing with the exact same sample. We've basically taken the water and the CO2 out, out of that. We have loaded the NIST EPA library. So that contains 5,224 currently. Normally you don't need to do this, but just to kind of illustrate what's gonna happen is it's going to go through all these spectra to look for a match. So because again, first principles, they all have a unique, unique fingerprint, unique si uh, signature. So with that in place, the user is simply going to ask for the uh, software to scan through the reference database and do a statistical match on what it sees here. 12, 15 seconds or so, depending on the computer, then what it's showing the end user is that here in this sample, it believes statistically there is acetone with a very strong 98% fit, this concentration, the ethanol in 96, 97% fit concentration and the isopropyl alcohol, this particular fit and concentration. So with that information, the user can go back to their original application library. Again, we're not changing the sample, the sample staying constant and can look their way through and say, there's our acetone. Yes, we had the acetone isopropyl alcohol, uh, there's methanol, uh, but it had, the third gas had pointed it to us to was the ethanol. So let's add ethanol to our application library. All right. And so we'll reanalyze, and now it's come up with the successful fit, the, the residual value is all green. Green is, is a successful analysis, so it's the three major components in this sample have been identified and quantified. So now, the um, user can put the controls in place.